Hello everyone and <laughs> wow. Welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I'm your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I try to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. Um, just wanted to mention, I hope the last video wasn't too dark. I did, I forgot to turn on some lights, you know, just one of those little things. Because I don't have a crew, it's a one-man show, sometimes I forget things. I'm not going to move the bottles. Another habit I'm trying to break is not losing the bottles, or moving them, excuse me. We're going to Hawke's Bay, Northern Island of New Zealand. And this is a winery called Trinity Hill. I'm going to do a couple of winery-specific episodes, and... You know, it's just one of those things I think that, you know, a lot of you like to know about specific wineries and what they're doing and how they're rolling. Um, Ancient Peaks was one that I uh, did not too long ago. Love those wines. I'm gonna, we're going to get our hands on some for the store, which I'm excited about. Great wines, and the pricing is really good. So, kind of excited about Ancient Peaks out of California, out of Paso Robles. Um, you know, discovered them through a friend who introduced the, one of the owners to me. And there we are. We uh, got a distributor up here in Washington State, and now we're going to have them. So Trinity Hill, out of the North Island of New Zealand, and Hawke's Bay is, of course, on the east side, kind of not quite center, a little bit, uh, you know, north of, but kind of in the middle, I guess, a little south of the middle. And a very cool region of uh, New Zealand. Uh, they actually really started making Cabernet Sauvignon there, and uh, sometimes it was hard to ripen. Uh, so now uh, Merlot has become a prominent part of that. Of course, Sauvignon Blanc, you say New Zealand, you think Sauvignon Blanc. But the cool thing about this is now we have a, a, a blend, a Syrah from the Gimlet Gravels of, New, of Hawke's Bay, a kind of a cool region. Uh, there was a river, I cannot pronounce the river, sorry. Don't have anybody here to tell me how to do that. Uh, there was a big flood. The river changed course, and it left all this uh, washout gravel in that region. Uh, produces some great wines out of that area. But, you know, New Zealand has really struggled to not pigeonhole itself into the Sauvignon Blanc category. Uh, fortunately for them, Sauvignon Blanc is not, it's like in the United States anyway, the fourth most popular white varietal, Chardonnay, Pinot Gris, Moscato, then Sauvignon Blanc. And I think maybe Sauvignon Blanc might be crawling ahead of Moscato again. I haven't read any reports lately, but I'm willing to venture that that's the case. So let's get started right off the bat. We're going to start, of course, with a Sauvignon Blanc. Trinity Hill Sauvignon Blanc 2013, 100% Hawks Bay. And this rolls in at $18. I've never tried Trinity Hill wine. I'm excited about this. Always excited to try new wines, things that I have not tried before. Do you get excited about trying new wines? I hope you do. I did a different uh, finish on my episode, on the last episode, which I hope is not too dark. It might be a little darker than normal. Sorry about that. I'm still going to publish it. It was on White Blends. I'm saying that because I have not put it out there yet. It's still on the recorder, ready to be put out there. All right, let's see what we get on the nose. Oh, there you go. Has that gooseberry kind of grapefruit. A little pine action going on. A lot of people refer to that as cat piss. Um, I, this does not have that pungent uh, aroma. I always think it's just kind of gooseberry grapefruit. Put, put those two together and you get a little bit of grass coming through. A little bit of uh, that grapefruit pith. More grapefruit pith than the grapefruit fruit. If you know what I mean. The pith is that, you know, right on the edge sort of thing. Let's see what we get on the palate. Mouth puckering acidity. 
Good citrus fruit though. I mean, what I like, I, I'm immediately in love with this Sauvignon Blanc because it doesn't taste like I just bit into a grapefruit or I'm drinking grapefruit juice. It has some other things. It has a little bit of lime action, a little bit of gooseberry coming through, a little bit of grass. There is grapefruit there. Very high acid though. You need, this needs oysters. I mean, like, it's screaming. It's screaming for something salty, oyster, clam, something like that. It has that high acid content. But also a lot of fruit. Um, opposite of what sends there, where you get more minerality, this has more fruit. Just a hint of wet stone, obviously New World, great bottle of Sauvignon Blanc, classic Sauvignon Blanc, my, my uh, Chihuahua and Chihuini are having a little wrestling match right in front of me, right? <laughs> anyway, great wine, good acid, good fruit, wow. A little less than Kim Crawford, nice clean wet stone finish. I'm going to go B plus on that. I think um, I think that's a great Sauvignon Blanc, a great example of what they can do without going total grapefruit bomb. I swear, I swear, you could line up if you put a little food coloring or some sort of a coloring in a Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand, made it look milky like a grapefruit juice, and you put grapefruit juice. I don't know if you could tell the difference. Some of them are that much grapefruit. So this has a little more going on than that. I like that. I'm going to go B+. Plus. Let's move on. Nice. Marlboro is, of course, the area that gets the most attention for Sauvignon Blanc. So it's nice to taste some from the North Island of Hawke's Bay. Trinity Hill. The Trinity. 2013. 100% Hawke's Bay. This rolls in at $18. It's predominantly Merlot, which has taken over Cabernet Sauvignon in this region as far as plantings. A little bit of Tempranillo, Malbec, and some other varietals it didn't specify. Alright. I had a uh, Syrah from Hawks Bay that I really liked. So I'm really excited to try this one. Syrah's starting to come back. It's kind of cool. I, I'm, I'm liking it. Uh, of course, people are coming back to Washington Syrah. California Syrah, it'll be hard to get them to go over to New Zealand Syrah until, you know, that kind of, it gets a stronger foothold. Let's see what we get on the nose. Ooh. A lot of violets, a lot of, I get a little bit of plum action and currants all day. Very, very aromatic. I mean, it just jumps out at you in the nose and it has that really kind of deeper, kind of uh, sultry element to it. Get a little bit of uh, tobacco coming through. A little bit of leather, like old, old leather, which is kind of, uh, kind of cool, I think. A little bit of blackberry coming through. There's a lot going on on this nose. Let's see what we get on the palate. A little bit thin. I'm a little disappointed. For 18 bucks, you don't want that thinness coming through. It has some interesting qualities. That leather tobacco thing comes through big time. It's like somebody rubbed tobacco into an old wallet or something. You really get that. With the currents coming through. A little boring. If you like tobacco, if you like leather, if you like just a hint of currants, um, there's just not a lot going on. It's very thin. I'm going to have to go C- minus on that. It's not atrocious. It's below average. For 18 bucks, it's a waste of money. Let's move on. 
kind of disappointed there. Uh, 2013 Trinity Hill Syrah Gimlet Gravels, New Zealand. This rolls in at $30. Hawks Bay Gimlet Gravels is more uh, actually west of the actual bay, kind of in the center of the Hawks Bay region. I looked at the name of that river and I could not, for the life of me, pronounce it. So I didn't, I'm not even going to attempt it. Okay. Thirty bucks, guys. Now that's a chump change for any of us. Talking about spending your wine dollars wisely. We want to scrutinize this one. That being said, there's a lot of Syrah from Washington that is much more than 30 bucks, but I can think of a many exceptional Syrahs from Washington that are in that price range. Let's see what we get on the nose. It's like blueberries meets caramel meets blackberry. Some violets coming through, definitely a little hint of tobacco. Very perfumed. I mean, when I say perfumed, and I've explained this before, just in case you haven't watched these episodes, you know how perfume kind of jumps out there and really is more pungent? Uh, that's what it is. I mean, it just it kind of comes through like perfume versus just the fruit aromas. I mean, it would be like... Uh, Standing next to somebody who sprayed on a little blackberry perfume and then you're standing in a, bu near a bucket of mashed blackberries. You kind of get the difference in the two. I hope. Yeah, the tobacco is coming through even more. A little bit of dark cherry coming through. Let's see what we get on pellet. Nice, nice depth on the palate. There's actually a good bit of acid, a uh, little bit of grip on the backside. A lot of uh, kind of tarry uh, blackberries, a little bit of blueberry coming through, maybe even a hint of black raspberry. Serious grip. Now, I need a big piece of rib steak or something right here to really neutralize that grip that this has on it. Good acid, good structure, um, good fruit with, you know, a little bit of uh, that tobacco kind of tarry thing going on. Uh, this is a baby. What did I say this was? 2000, yeah, 2013. I mean, it's right now, this was is not ready to drink. I mean, it needs... It needs some time in the bottle, but I can see this. If you're having uh, prime rib, if you're having pot roast, if you're having uh, burgers with blue cheese on it, uh, this would be the per It would go nicely with that, absolutely. Uh, 30 bucks, you know, it's a little steep, a little steep. That has such good potential. I'm having trouble uh, determining how I feel about that. You know, that $30 price range, you know, it's all the way from New Zealand. I get it. It's from a region, the Gimlet Gravels. It's a, a gaining a lot of attention in New Zealand. I think it's still a baby. I think it will flesh out and be a lot nicer. I'm going to go BB Plus on that. I think it's a really good Syrah. I think it's worth having if you want to experience New Zealand Syrah. I think it's really a something that would be a nice experience for you, but definitely do it with food. This is not a solo wine. This is not a cocktail wine. This needs food. Thanks for watching, and remember, it's not about the label. It's about the juice inside the bottle. It's also about your palate. It's not about my palate. It's not about Parker. It's not about James Suckling. 
It's your palate that you have to be true to. And you need to concentrate. Try to spend your wine dollars wisely. Thanks for watching.